Welcome back to the Onco Daily Interactive Series. Today, we're diving into a story that's uh, generating a lot of buzz. A 14-year-old named Human Bikali, who was recently named Time's Kid of the Year. He's invented a soap that he believes could help prevent skin cancer, and it's estimated to cost just 50 cents a par. That's right. It's called Skin Cancer Treating Soap, or SCTS, and it's designed to be an affordable and accessible solution for a global health problem. Now, you might be wondering, how can a simple bar of soap possibly fight cancer? Well, what's fascinating about Bacali's invention is that it tackles melanoma on two fronts. He was inspired to create SCTS after seeing firsthand the impact of sun exposure on workers in Ethiopia, his goal was to develop a preventative measure that could be easily integrated into people's daily routines, regardless of their socioeconomic background. Okay, so let's break down how it works. First, it boosts the immune response mm -hmm. by reactivating dendritic cells. These cells are like the body's first line of defense against invaders, mm -hmm. including cancer cells. Exactly. Dendritic cells are crucial for recognizing and presenting antigens to other immune cells, triggering a cascade of events that can lead to the destruction of cancer cells. And the second key element is its innovative delivery system. SETS uses lipid-based nanoparticles to deliver active ingredients and ensure they stay on the skin, offering sustained protection even after you've rinsed off the soap. It's a clever way to ensure that the active ingredients remain in contact with the skin for a longer period, maximizing their potential therapeutic effect. So what are these active ingredients that make this soap so special? Well. Some of them are familiar names in skincare. SCTS contains salicylic acid and glycolic acid, both excellent exfoliating agents that help remove dead skin cells <sighs> and promote skin renewal. Uh, so it's not just about fighting cancer, it's about maintaining overall skin health as well. Precisely. Healthy skin is more resilient and better equipped to defend itself against damage, including the kind that can lead to cancer. Then there's tretinoin, a vitamin A derivative that regulates skin cell growth and differentiation. Tretinoin is a powerhouse ingredient in many skincare products. It helps keep skin cells functioning properly and prevents abnormalities that can lead to cancer. And finally, there are the imidazoquinolins delivered via those nanoparticles we talked about. They are known for their ability to enhance the immune response against melanoma. So you've got these common skincare ingredients working together with this cutting edge nanoparticle delivery system. It's like a combination of traditional wisdom and modern science. And that's what makes Beck Kelly's invention so intriguing. He's taken a simple everyday product and enhanced it with sophisticated technology to potentially address a major health concern. It's pretty remarkable, especially yeah. coming from a 14 year old now. I know everyone's probably wondering, is this soap approved? Can I go out and buy it right now? Well, here's the thing. It's important to remember that SCTS is still in the test phase. It hasn't gone through human clinical trials yet, so we don't have definitive proof of its effectiveness or any potential side effects. So, while it's generating a lot of excitement, it's important to temper that enthusiasm with a healthy dose of caution. Absolutely. Bekele is working with scientists, conducting lab tests, and aiming for FDA approval. But until we have data from rigorous clinical trials, we can't make any definitive claims about its efficacy or safety. That being said, it's still a fascinating development, and it raises a lot of interesting questions about the future of skin cancer prevention. It certainly does. But Kelly's story highlights the power of youthful ingenuity and the importance of exploring innovative solutions to global health challenges. And while we wait for further research and development on SETS, it's a good reminder for all of us to stay informed about melanoma prevention. Melanoma is a serious form of skin cancer, but there are steps we can take to reduce our risk. Protecting ourselves from excessive sun exposure, wearing protective clothing, and regularly checking our skin for any suspicious moles or lesions are crucial. So, while this soap holds a lot of promise, it's not a replacement for proven prevention methods. Speaking of melanoma, for those who might not be familiar, could you give us a quick overview of what it is and why it's so concerning. Sure. Melanoma is a type of skin cancer that develops from the pigment-producing cells in our skin, called melanocytes. While it only accounts for about 1% of all skin cancers, it's the most dangerous type, as it's more likely to spread to other parts of the body if not detected and treated early. That's a sobering thought. It makes you realize just how important early detection and prevention are. Absolutely, and that's why Bikela's invention, while still in its early stages, has the potential to be so impactful. Imagine a world where a simple, affordable bar of soap could significantly reduce the incidence of melanoma, 
particularly in communities with limited access to health care. It's a powerful vision, and it's inspiring to see someone so young taking on such a big challenge. It really is. And it's a reminder that innovation can come from anywhere. Sometimes the simplest solutions can have the greatest impact. So, while we wait to see what the future holds for SCTS, it's important to remember that we all have a role to play in melanoma prevention. Talking to your healthcare provider about your individual risk factors, getting regular skin checks, and being sun smart are all steps we can take today to protect ourselves and our loved ones. And don't forget to start informed about the latest developments in melanoma research. The field is constantly evolving, and there's always new information and potential breakthroughs on the horizon. Well, that brings us to the end of the first part of our deep dive. We've explored the fascinating story of Hemant Bekele and his invention, SCTS. We've delved into the science behind this innovative soap and discussed its potential impact on melanoma prevention. In the next part of our deep dive, We'll delve deeper into melanoma itself. We'll explore its causes, risk factors, and the importance of early detection. So stay tuned for part two, where we'll continue our exploration into the world of melanoma and the potential for innovation to change the game. Welcome back to the Onco Daily Interactive series. We left off discussing Heyman Bekele's invention and its potential impact on melanoma prevention. It's definitely an inspiring story, and I'm eager to see how it all unfolds, but for now, Let's shift our focus back to melanoma itself. We've touched on it briefly, but I think it's important to dig a little deeper and understand what causes this disease and who is most at risk. That's a great point. Knowledge is power, especially when it comes to taking proactive steps to protect ourselves. So let's start with the big one, ultraviolet UV radiation from the sun. We all know that too much sun can be bad for our skin, but how exactly does it lead to melanoma? Essentially. UV radiation damages the DNA in our skin cells, specifically the melanocytes, those pigment-producing cells we talked about earlier. When that DNA gets damaged, it can disrupt the normal growth and division of these cells, sometimes leading to uncontrolled growth, which is the hallmark of cancer. So it's not just about getting a sunburn, it's about the cumulative damage that UV radiation can cause over time. Exactly. Every time we expose our skin to the sun without protection, we're increasing our risk of developing skin cancer including melanoma. And it's important to remember that this risk isn't limited to people with fair skin. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. We often hear that people with fair skin are more susceptible to sun damage. But can people with darker skin tones get melanoma too? Absolutely. While it's true that people with fair skin, right. light hair, and blue or green eyes are statistically at higher risk, melanoma can affect people of all races and ethnicities. It's crucial that everyone, regardless of skin tone, take sun protection seriously. So what are some of the other risk factors we should be aware of? Well, we've talked about sun exposure, but another key factor is moles, having a large number of moles, more than 50, or having atypical moles, those that look different from your other moles, can increase your risk. It's not just about the number of moles, but, I, but also their appearance. That's right. It's important to be familiar with your own moles and pay attention to any changes in size, shape, or color and if you have any concerns, don't hesitate to see a dermatologist. That brings us back to the ABCDE rule we mentioned earlier. It's a simple but powerful tool for checking your moles. Yeah. And recognizing potential signs of melanoma. Absolutely. Asymmetry, border irregularity, color yeah. variation, diameter, and evolving. These five factors can help you spot a suspicious mole and seek medical attention promptly. Early detection is key when it comes to melanoma. Right. Without a doubt. The sooner it's caught the better the chances of successful treatment. That's why regular skin checks are so important, both by yourself and by a dermatologist. Now, are there any other risk factors we should be aware of besides sun exposure and moles? Yes, family history also plays a role. If you have a close relative, such as a parent, sibling, mm. or child who has had melanoma, your risk is significantly higher. So if melanoma runs in your family, you should be extra vigilant about skin checks and sun protection. That's exactly right. Knowing your family history and discussing it with your healthcare provider can help you develop a personalized prevention plan. Speaking of personalized medicine, I'm curious to know if there are any genetic tests that can predict a person's risk of developing melanoma. That's a great question, and it's an area of active research. There are some genes that have been linked to an increased risk of melanoma and genetic testing is becoming more widely available. However, it's important to remember that genetic testing isn't for everyone, and it's not a perfect predictor of whether or not you'll develop melanoma. So it's something to discuss with your healthcare provider. 
to see if it's appropriate for your situation. Exactly. And even if genetic testing reveals an increased risk, it doesn't mean you're destined to develop melanoma. It just means you need to be extra diligent about prevention and early detection. So knowing your risk factors, being sun smart, and getting regular skin checks are our best defenses against melanoma right now. Absolutely. And as research continues, we may have even more tools at our disposal in the future. Speaking yeah. of research, I'm excited about the potential of some of the new treatments that are being developed for melanoma. Oh, yeah. Tell me more. Oh, immunotherapy, which we touched on earlier, is showing great promise. These drugs are basically training the body's immune system huh. to recognize and attack cancer cells. And they're having a real impact on survival rates for people with advanced melanoma. That's incredible. It sounds like we're making real progress yeah. in the fight against this disease. We are. And targeted therapies, which focus on specific molecules or pathways involved in cancer cell growth, are also showing great promise. For example, drugs that target the BRAF gene, which is yeah. mutated in about half of all melanomas, are proving to be very effective. So it seems like we're moving towards a more personalized approach mm -hmm. to melanoma treatment using genetic information to tailor therapies to the individual patient. Exactly. It's a really exciting time to be in the field of oncology. We're learning more and more about the complexities of cancer, and that knowledge is translating into better treatments and hopefully a cure someday. Well, that definitely gives us a lot to be hopeful about. Now, before <laughs> we wrap up this part of our deep dive, I want to circle back to Heman Bekele's soap. Knowing what we now know about melanoma do you think his invention has the potential to make a real difference? It's certainly an intriguing concept, and I applaud his ingenuity and dedication. If his soap proves to be effective in clinical trials, it could be a valuable addition to our arsenal of preventive measures. Especially considering its affordability and accessibility. Exactly. A simple, inexpensive bar of soap yeah. could have a huge impact, especially in parts of the world where access to healthcare is limited. But it's important to remember that we need more research to confirm its safety and efficacy. So, mm -hmm. while we wait for those results, it's a good reminder for all of us to be proactive about our own skin health, get those skin checks, be sun smart, and stay informed about the latest developments in melanoma research. That's great advice. And in the next part of our deep dive, we'll explore some of those latest developments, including new diagnostic tools, treatment advances, and the role of genomics in personalized medicine. Stay tuned for part three where we'll continue our exploration into the ever-evolving world of melanoma. Welcome back to the Onco Daily Interactive Series. We've been on quite a journey exploring the world of melanoma, from its causes and risk factors to the inspiring story of a young inventor trying to make a difference. And in this final part, we're going to look ahead. What's on the horizon for melanoma research and treatment? What breakthroughs might change the game in the years to come. That's what I'm most curious about. We've talked about some promising developments, like yeah. immunotherapy and targeted therapy, but where is all of this heading? Well, one thing that's clear is that the future of melanoma treatment is increasingly personalized. We're moving away from a one-size-fits-all approach and towards therapies that are tailored to the individual patient's tumor. That makes sense. I mean, uh, yeah. every cancer is unique. Exactly. And thanks to advances in genomics, the study of an organism's entire set of DNA were gaining a much deeper understanding of the specific genetic mutations that drive the growth and spread of melanoma. So by analyzing a patient's tumor DNA, mm -hmm. doctors can identify the most effective treatment mm -hmm. for that particular cancer. That's the goal. And we're already seeing this approach in action with targeted therapies. For example, if a patient's melanoma has a specific mutation in the BRAF gene, we can use drugs that specifically target that mutation, often with remarkable results. That's incredible. So it's like having a custom-made weapon to fight the cancer. It's a powerful analogy. And as we learn more about the genetic landscape of melanoma, we'll be able to develop even more targeted and effective therapies. So genomics is really revolutionizing the way we approach cancer treatment. Absolutely. It's not just about treatment, though. Mm. Genomics is also being used to develop better screening tools and risk assessments for melanoma. So we can identify people who are at higher risk mm -hmm. of developing melanoma and to take steps to prevent it in the first place. Precisely. By identifying individuals who are genetically predisposed to this disease, we can implement early intervention strategies like more frequent skin checks, increased sun protection, or even preventative medications. That's a huge step towards shifting from a reactive approach to a proactive one. And it all comes down to empowering individuals with knowledge and giving them the tools to take control of their health. 
It's exciting to think about all the possibilities that genomics and personalized medicine hold for the future of melanoma treatment and prevention. It is, and let's not forget about the potential of immunotherapy. We've talked about how these drugs are already making a big difference, but there's still so much we're learning about how to harness the power of the immune system to fight cancer. Are there any new immunotherapies on the horizon that you're particularly excited about? There are several promising clinical trials underway, testing new combinations of immunotherapy drugs, as well as personalized vaccines that are tailored to the individual patient's tumor. It's a rapidly evolving field, and I think we're just scratching the surface of what's possible. It's incredible to think that we might one day have a vaccine for melanoma. That would be a game changer. It would. And it's not just about new drugs. Researchers are also exploring innovative ways to deliver these treatments, like using nanoparticles, to target drugs directly to cancer cells and minimize side effects. So it's not just about what we're using to fight melanoma, mm -hmm. but how we're delivering it. Exactly. It's all about maximizing efficacy while minimizing harm to the patient. Well, it sounds like the future of melanoma research and treatment is incredibly bright. It is. And while there's still a lot of work to be done, I'm optimistic that we'll continue to make significant strides in the years to come. This has been such an eye-opening deep dive. We've covered so much ground from the basics of melanoma yeah. to the cutting edge research that's shaping the future of this disease. It's been a pleasure sharing this journey with you. And I hope it's empowered you to be proactive about your own skin health and to support the ongoing efforts to prevent and treat melanoma. I know I've learned a lot and I'm feeling much more informed and hopeful about the future of melanoma research. Thank you for sharing your expertise and insights with us today. It was my pleasure. And remember, knowledge is power. Stay informed, stay vigilant, and stay hopeful. Together, we can make a difference in the fight against melanoma. And to all of you listening, thank you for joining us on this deep dive. We hope you found it informative and inspiring. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.